Hi, I'm Eric, an engineering manager at Google, working on open source integrations for Google Cloud Platform. This is the first in a short series of videos talking about some of the great open source tools by HashiCorp and how they can be used with Google Cloud Platform. Each video will focus on a specific tool, but will be part of an overall demo that we'll keep adding to with each new video in the series. And over Hangouts, I have with me today Artem Yakomenko, a Googler based in Sydney, and Chris Roberts, an engineer at HashiCorp based in Portland, Oregon. Thanks for joining me today, fellas. Here's the background story for this series. Each video will have a different set of guest speakers, but let's imagine they're part of a small game studio and are working on their next project, a 1980s retro style space game, but updated to play on the web with multiplayer support. It's been designed to have a separate JavaScript front end and back end server written in the Go programming language. Through the next few videos, we'll follow the project along from the development phase up through a demo to the CEO and then finally the big launch. But for today's video, we're still in the development phase of the project with a couple of developers actively working on writing the code. So where do the HashiCorp tools fit into this? Today, we'll start with Vagrant. Chris, can you tell us a little bit about Vagrant and what problems it solves? Sure. Vagrant is a tool primarily used by software developers. It provides an easy and repeatable way to create custom development environments. Vagrant has been around for a long time and brings together the well-known worlds of VMs and operating systems, along with some of the same patterns you may have heard about with Docker but without having to adopt a new container-centric world. Thanks, Chris. I think we've all heard stories or experienced this ourselves of working at places where developers create their environments by copying and pasting a bunch of shell commands from some internal wiki page. Vagrant essentially replaces those setup instructions with a single configuration file that can be put under version control and treated just like your code. Correct me if I'm wrong, but a common use case is for developers to use Vagrant to spin up local VMs if they have VirtualBox or VMware installed. Yes, that's correct. With local VMs, the developer isn't cluttering up their host operating system with a bunch of extra software or having to run a specific operating system. It's easy to create and destroy these VMs, too. What can start to get tricky, though, is when developers want to collaborate using a local VM. And while Vagrant does have a share feature, that may not always be a viable option. So they can use a remote VM that they can share. This is where GCP integration with Vagrant comes in. Google Cloud Platform has many different services ranging from big data and machine learning all the way down to infrastructure offerings such as our VM service, Compute Engine. Let's get started with how developers can use Vagrant to spin up a shared GCE VM. First, go to vagrantup.com and download the version for your local system. Next, go to cloud.google.com slash free dash trial to create a Google Cloud Platform account if you don't already have one. Next, you'll need to enable the Google Compute Engine API. A service account and a corresponding JSON credential file will need to be created as well. Now, we'll spin up a Google Compute Engine instance with my hyperspace video game and development environment ready to go. Don't forget to install the Vagrant Google driver using Vagrant's plugin command. I'll do that with a Vagrant up command with Google provider specified. Of course, for this to work, I'll need to create my Vagrant file first. Chris, can you walk us through our Vagrant file? Sure. First, we define the provider information to access the GCE API. This includes the project ID, client email, and user information. Next, we provide details for the type of instance we want Vagrant to create and set the SSH information to allow access. Using Vagrant synced folders, we are able to push the local source code to the new instance. And finally, a provisioning script is used to create the new instance. Here, a simple shell provisioner runs an inline script on the remote instance. Vagrant also supports other provisioners, like Chef and Puppet, for more complex instance configuration. Now let's see how the GCE instance is coming along. OK, now that the Vagrant app has finished, you can see in the console that I have a new GCE VM running. When I click on its public IP address, you can see that the game is up and working. Vagrant and GCE make a great combination for scenarios like this, when you have multiple developers needing access to the same VM. GCE will store users' SSH keys in metadata, and those keys are propagated to the VM to allow remote access. Yes, with a quick Vagrant SSH, you can see there are multiple users in the home directory, each with their own SSH key to access the VM. You can also see that Artem's source code was copied to the VM in serve hyperspace directory, as was specified in his Vagrant file. So that was pretty quick, almost as fast as spinning up a local VM. Yeah, that looked really easy. Now for those looking to get started for their first time, where's the best place for them to learn more? Sure, to get started with Vagrant or to learn more, check out vagrantup.com. 
Thanks for watching. Check out our last video and the series playlist, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.